Good morning all. Here I'm documenting the Hall Effect feedback in relation to the UVW windings of a Lafert brushless servo motor. Now the Hall Effects are incorporated into the encoder feedback. It's all in the same unit. And the encoder side of this feedback is missing counts. It's dropping pulses. So we're going to replace that encoder Hall Effect feedback unit. But we have to time the new encoder to the UVW windings. So we need to document the timing. Now I have this DC motor right here rotating the shaft of the servo motor and it's generating a voltage out UV and W. It's generating a sine wave and that's what we see right here. Now the Hall effect feedback is this waveform down here. So we power up the encoder with 5 volts. We look at UV and W with the oscilloscope and we look at the Hall Effect feedback with the oscilloscope. So here we're on channel 1 looking at the UVW sine wave that's generated by rotating that motor and we're looking at the Hall Effect feedback on these three wires right here. This right here Oh, hold on trigger. This right here is the generated waveform of U and V or U and W or V and W. And right now we're looking at V and W. This down here is the Hall Effect waveform. And you can see that we're in line. We're looking at the purple wire, the violet wire. That's Hall Effect Violet. That's what we're going to call it. <laughs> now, let me uh, let me move this up so that we're in line with the generated sine wave of V and W. And you can see that the Hall Effect is perfectly timed with that waveform right there. So when we install the new feedback device will set up this system just like we have it now and we will rotate that feedback device by hand it'll be loosened up on the shaft until we have this right here and then we'll tighten it down and it'll be perfectly timed now let's go look at uh, the other wires Still looking at the generated voltage of V and W, and now we're looking at the gray and pink wire, and you can see that the Hall effect is not in line. That Hall effect, the gray and pink Hall effect, is not in line with the generated sine wave. Now we're going to go look at the gray wire. And it also is not in time with that generated sine wave of V and W. Go look back at the violet wire. And we're back in time. We're back in time. Now this also works for the generated waveform of U and V, U and W, and of course what we're looking at now, V and W. Now there's a difference, let me show you the difference. When we are looking at the generated waveform of U and W, 
to stop this test. And we're going to look at U and W. And we're going to look at the gray and pink wire. Right now we're still on the violet wire. This is now the generated voltage of U and W. Pink wire, pink, the gray and pink wire. Look at it. We're timed when this goes negative. That generated U and W goes to the negative portion, and we're in sync with the Hall effect right there. It's opposite. Whereas before, we were in sync on the positive side. So you could time it right here also. You could use this as your timing reference to get the feedback device properly timed to the shaft of that motor. Now we're going to look at the generated sine wave U and V, and we're going to go to the gray wire. Here we're in time again. This is the generated sine wave of U and V, and here we're looking at the gray wire. And we're in, we're timed on the positive side of the sine wave. So you have three different ways that you could ensure that that shaft is properly timed to that feedback device. There you go, folks. Now when I get to the house, I'll show you the hookups so you can perform this test. And you can time your Hall effect encoder feedback device to your motor. Thank you very much for stopping by. Hope y'all is having a good day. We'll see you next time. Hello all. Now what we have here are the connections to the oscilloscope from the Hall Effect slash encoder feedback and the motor windings. Now up here we have the red and black wire of the feedback unit connected to plus 5 volts DC and the black wire of that feedback unit connected to ground. Now here are the three Hall Effect outputs, gray, gray slash pink, and violet. We have the gray wire going to oscilloscope channel 2 in this instance right here when we look at the generated waveform of the motor windings U and V. U going to channel 1 probe of the oscilloscope and V going to ground back to the oscilloscope. When we rotated that motor, we had a generated waveform on U and V here. And when that generated waveform was going high, the output of the Hall effect on the gray wire was going high and in time with that positive waveform of U and V. Now here, in this instance, 
we're looking at the generated waveform of U and W. U is still going to oscilloscope channel 1, but this time W is going to probe ground. And we're looking at the gray and pink wire on oscilloscope probe channel 2. Now here, notice that when U to W is going high, this Hall effect output is going low to ground. And when the generated waveform of U and W is going low, the Hall effect output is going high, up to 5 volts, pulled up to 5 volts through that 10 kilo ohm resistor. Now in all these instances, we're rotating the shaft of that motor clockwise. Now, we're going to look at the last setup to view the relationship between the motor windings and the Hall effect output. We're going to look at the violet wire connected to oscilloscope probe channel 2 and V to oscilloscope probe channel 1 with W grounded back to the oscilloscope. In this case, when the generated waveform, when we were rotating that motor clockwise, as it was going in the positive direction, the violet wires Hall effect output went high. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Now this is how you can see the relationship between the motor windings and the Hall effect outputs. There you go, folks. <laughs> Thank you very much for stopping by. I got to run off into the backyard and fill up the bird feeders. It's going to be cold tonight. <laughs> they got to fill up their bellies. So we'll see you next time. <laughs>